living in the last days and time the words in morning, morning, morning. Coming to you live from Media One Studios in Atlanta, Georgia, Signs of the Time is now on the air. The only live talk show where you can call in and discuss current issues vital to our communities from a historical and biblical perspective. Featuring the Around the World Report, Ask the Elder, bi-monthly commentary, and a host of panelists concerned for humanity. So don't touch that dial. Stay tuned for your host, Daniel Israel, and Signs of the Time. Hi, welcome to Signs of the Times. I'm your host, Daniel Israel. This program is designed to serve as a forum for discussion of the social, economic, and political conditions of the world and local community. The panelists that appear on Signs of the Times are individuals who, despite their diversity, have a common bond which links them, and that is their study of history and their concern for humanity. This program is live, and we welcome your phone calls at 770-559-2999. That's 770-559. 559-2999. Tonight we have the Ask the Elder segment. This is the segment that we have bi-weekly where we bring the resident elder of the program on the uh, program with us to uh, field questions and comments that you may have concerning the topic that we're discussing or issues that uh, uh, you're aware of. And the elder uh, has, uh, over the years, have given us the insight that we needed scripturally and historically to uh, help us to further understand what all of these dynamics that are taking place in the world around us, what they really mean, and uh, in particular addressing simply some of the signs of the times. So without further ado, I would like to introduce the elder priest of the New Covenant Congregation of Israel, Yaakov ben Israel. Shalom. Shalom, El, how are you? Shalom, okay, fine. Uh, elder, you know, uh, there are many things happening as always uh, around the world, and one thing that um, is uh, on the lips of some talkers is this whole peace accord mm -hmm. uh, in why in why uh, in the why at the why plantation in Maryland why Mills plantation in Maryland uh, there's a uh, peace accords that are taking place whereby Yasser Arafat and uh, mm -hmm. Ariel Sharam and President Clinton and some of the other uh, advisors are coming together to try to bring about peace in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And one of the major issues uh, surrounding peace talks has to do with uh, security. Mm -hmm. uh, if um, the Israelis should give up that other 13 percent of the West Bank, mm -hmm. uh, will there ever be peace in Israel? Not until uh, we return back to Israel. Uh, you have to understand that <clears throat> Yahweh told uh, the people that's in that land, now that's Esau that's in the land. Those were the Herodians in the uh, New Testament who were called, the ones that's calling themselves the Jews. Mm -hmm. Now Abraham had two sons, Moab and Ammon. Right. Okay, now the Palestinians are the Jordanian Arabs. Those are the uh, Jordanian Arabs. Those are the ones that inherited the land, the, where they went into the land during the 13th century. And then later on, uh, the Israelis went in and took part of the city with the uh, with the help of the United States and Great Britain. But at that time, when they went in and took the land, oddly enough, the Palestinians was in the land, but uh, uh, the land was under British control. Okay. See, so once the Israelis went in and took part of the land, uh, uh, the United States government and Europe declared Israel a state. Well, we knew what that was going to bring in the beginning. That couldn't bring anything but war because you got two different seeds in one land claim it to be the same people and neither one of them are that people right, and right. just like Yahweh told him that uh, was that as long as he was in his brother's land he was going to have war from generation to generation and truly ever since you've heard of an Israel there has been war now remember the scripture also says when they say peace 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 mm -hmm. then sudden destruction is right. going to come on them like a woman in travail and they're not going to be able to put it off and what we have to understand is what all of this is leading up to all of this is leading up to the final battle that's going to take place in the mountains of Israel, the Battle of Armageddon. Mm. But see, 
uh, once this battle comes, it's not only going to be to destroy all the armies that's going to be in in the, in, the, uh, in Jerusalem at that time. It's also going to destroy the people that are calling themselves uh, the Jews and the Israelites. See, Israel is called Palestine. Okay. This is why Lot's two boys are called the, Pal the, Pal uh, the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. Now, even Yasser Arafat said one time, well, you know, Yeshua, he was uh, just another, he was a... Uh, uh, a Palestinian prophet, right? You see, but we know that uh, uh, Palestine was called Israel, but we know that the, that the Messiah did not come out of the house of Yasser Arafat. He right. came out of the house that we're in. Uh, this is one of the reasons why we're servants today. So, as far as peace being in that in that land, my brother, you have to ask yourself a question: If we are the inhabitants of the land, how is it? that somebody can move in our land and have peace, and here we are in captivity, and we don't have any peace. Well, you know, uh, and that's interesting because all of this peace talk been going on for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. interestingly enough, the United States have always tried to uh, have a, be the, uh, the, the one to bridge the gap, if mm -hmm. you will, mm -hmm. between the two nations, the peacemakers, if mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. But seeing that there can be no peace in that land until the children of Israel return to the land, uh, what would be some of the events that would lead to our deliverance back into the land? Well, the main, leading up to those things. Well, the main thing that we have to look for uh, to begin uh, uh, over in the Middle East is uh, when they start this animal sacrifice. That's what we have to watch for, the animal sacrifice. Now, we know that uh, 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 the people here in Georgia perfected the red heifer. Okay. for the Israelis, and they have that red heifer in the land now. So the big problem is uh, the Palestinians don't want to let the, 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 the Israelis up on that temple mound to do any sacrificing, you mm -hmm. see, because once they sacrifice on that mountain, call itself cleansing that mountain with the blood of that red heifer, we know that all hell is going to break loose in the Middle East. But the, what's interesting is this, the top Christian is the one that's going to put an uh, end to that. Once the Pope go over there, then the Pope is going to negotiate a peace between uh, the Israelis and the Palestinians, and then later uh, that peace is supposed to last for uh, three and a half years. As a matter of fact, with the Pope having the power of Europe behind him, this mm -hmm. one world order they're talking about, with the Pope having the power of Europe behind him, we can very well see how the Israel, I mean, the Arabs is going to kind of, is going to have to back down because they know that they can't defeat Europe. They've tried it before. They tried it in the 6th century, mm -hmm. and they tried it again in the 13th century, and every time they got to Constantinople, the Europeans turned that battle right there, and that's as far as they went. So they know that they're not going to go up into Europe and do anything. The main thing is uh, that's going to happen is written in the prophet Daniel, Daniel 11 chapter, about the king, the war between the kings of the north and the kings of the south. And, and once that take once once that war take place, then we'll have the Antichrist out the way. See, the people of the earth today are looking for one man to call the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. The Antichrist hmm. is anyone who don't believe that Yahshua was the Son of God. Right. Like Paul told you, you've heard that Antichrist is going to come, but I tell you today that there are many Antichrists, you see, and uh, the, the first one of them went out from among us right. simply because they didn't believe. They were the ones that didn't believe that Messiah was the Son of God, so they was Antichrist. So the, the, the war that's going to take place is going to be between the Christians and the Muslims in the Middle East. And the Muslims in the Middle East, the Arabs in the Middle East, don't have a prayer against this one world order. Like Revelation said, who is able to make war with this beast here? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, hmm. and and it also told us that this this beast uh, brought the whole earth under one king. So we can very well see that all of the religions, all of the power structures on the earth is going to be conquered by the Europeans. I mean, it's another crusade, you know, on what Christian soldiers marching off the war. And this has went on, this has been going on ever since the Christians came up on the scene. They've been taking things from various people. America is a good example of that. So we can very well see that this next war, uh, the final war, where the war that's going to lead up to the final war is going to take place in the Middle East. But interest, interestingly, what that war is going to cause is America's destruction. Hmm. See, just like the prophet say, she's going to see, they're trying to uh, uh, hone in on some things that was told Abraham. Right. When Yahweh told Abraham, say, 
Blessed is he who blessed thee, mm -hmm. and cursed is he who cursed thee. Mm -hmm. So they feel as long as they help the Israelis that Yahweh is going to bless them. You mm -hmm. see what I mean? So when, when uh, once uh, uh, the Palestinians and the Israelis get really ready to go to war and America sticks her head in, the prophet says he's going to make, going to come in like a lion from the swelling of the Jordan. But I'm going to suddenly make, it, uh, make a turn and run away from her. What's going to happen is that's when Russia is going to destroy the United States. Mm. And just before that happens, see, the thing of it is we have to be out of here. Right. This is why it was certain signs left for us to look for. Right. And uh, I, I think this is the reason why the program is named Signs of the Time. Right. There are certain signs that was given to us by the prophets to look for. And the Messiah even said, when you see these things begin to come to pass, mm -hmm. look up because your redemption is near right at the door. But see, we don't get these things from religious uh, 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 ministers today. They don't tell us the things to look for, the signs that's going on on the earth so we'll know what the Lord is doing. Right. See, that's, right. that's, that's the whole idea about scripture, knowing what going Yahweh on. is doing, right. see. And uh, uh, you have to be led by the Spirit. So in order for you to be led by the Spirit, you have to know what the Spirit is doing. So this is the reason why the Spirit was given to us, so that we can be led into the path of righteousness, so that we can get the job done. Because when your brother shows on the scene, mm -hmm. there's not going to be any time for beg and forgiveness and so forth. If you haven't got your bonus ready, then you can forget it. Because when the Messiah comes, contrary to what the nations are saying, when the Messiah come, according to the book of Revelation, all of the wicked is going to be taken off the earth, you see. And once all the wicked is taken off the earth and, and uh, the Messiah sits on the throne of David in Jerusalem, Israel, then all of his people are going to be brought back up too. The scriptures say the people, uh, the prophet Isaiah told you they're going to bring the children of Israel on mules and leaders right. any way that they can get right. her to God's stand. Here, take your people. Take your people so we can have some peace in our land, you see. So that's basically, as, as far as the Israelis and so forth is, uh, is concerned, the only thing they're doing is just kicking up a whole lot of dust <laughs> because nothing can come out of it because here they are fighting about my land. See, the Bible tells me that the, that, that the Jews, the Israelites, were black people. Mm. And there's so many instances in there to let you know that they were black people. When Christ was... Remember when Moses left the land of Egypt mm -hmm. and he went up around the Arabs and Median, uh, the lady that saw him thought he was an Egyptian. Mm -hmm. You see, not because of his, his dress. He had been out in the wilderness uh, uh, 11 days or better, right. so it wasn't because of his dress. It was because of his color. When, uh, when the Messiah was born, they told him, said, look, go down into Egypt and hide. Well, the Egyptians are the Ethiopians today, so we can very well look at the Ethiopians and look at ourselves, and we can see that we have a color resemblance. But then what we can do now, if you've noticed, we can look at the Ethiopians and look at us and tell the difference. We can, but the Europeans were the ones that couldn't tell the difference. You know, they think all of us look alike. Right, we right. all look alike. Unless something come up that they need a scapegoat. So that's him right there, <laughs> you know. But anyways, um, <laughs> Uh, what's gonna, the, the final thing that's going to take place is this animal sacrifice and then the war between Europe and the Arabs in the Middle East. And then once that jump off, then our, our deliverance out of this country here is right there. Well, you know, talking about the uh, animal sacrifice, you know, all these uh, animal rights activists and people of that sort, I mean, do, you, do you think they're going to stand just idly by and watch animals being sacrificed for purposes of, I guess to cover man's sin? If, is that the purpose of the animal sacrifice? Brother, once they get this one where a governmental system set in, these animal rights uh, activists and so forth, so they're going to shut their mouths. You know what they're going to be about? Serving that beast, worshiping that pope. You've got to understand what's going to take place now. America, we know that this Y2K thing, we know that's all about America uh, putting a uh, a debit and a credit and debit system in place, taking the money out of circulation, right? Have you seen the new money they got, man? It looked like something the kids play with. Monopoly money. Right, you can't hardly tell the 20s from the 50s. Right. You have to look real close at it. Well, uh, America keep changing the money because uh, back when the, uh, America was in the bed with the Shah of Iran, they gave the Shah of Ar they gave the Iranians a printing press, the same printing press they used to print their monies on, mm -hmm. right? And then they gave them access to the family that supplies the paper. So the Arabs has been flooding the market 
with bogus bills. So America can't back all those notes. Hmm. So what she's going to have to do is she's going to have to go to a, we know she broke. So what she's going to have to do is go to a, a credit and debit system. That way she can take the money out of circulation, circulation. And once she does that, brother, she will know what color socks you buy, where you buy, <laughs> and just if you have them clean, where you have them clean it because you have to use that card right. in order to uh, uh, deal with the things you have to deal with. But see, America is being set, trying to set herself up to be uh, uh, an information system. As a matter of fact, uh, just I think it was a month before last, the Pentagon finally got those seven uh, 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 computer sites that they got around this country. They finally got those in place. Hmm. And those computer sites will monitor everything everybody does that has a Social Security number. Mm -hmm. And you can't do anything without a Social Security number. That's the forerunner of the number of the beast. So America is trying on a worldwide scale to control all of the information. That's why she put up so many satellites. Right. So she control control all information. If she controls all information, then she controls the world, right? But when you check the prophets, uh, uh, this beast, this last king, has to come from Europe. Okay. The Europeans have to run uh, run this because it was the German Ro Holy Roman Empire that fell, and it's going to have to be the German Holy Roman Empire that was set back up again, and America will have no part in it. Well, you know, speaking of the Germans, you know, uh, Helmut Kohl's mm -hmm. uh, had this big farewell and mm -hmm. so forth, mm -hmm. and they was talking about, they was praising him for reuniting mm -hmm. you, the two Germans. But prophetically, yeah. that mm -hmm. was to come about anyway. Right. Well, it was on the wings of the way. The prophets had already prophesied uh, John da Daniel and John the Revelator told you about this this beast that had the deadly wound and that wound was healed. Mm -hmm. But the important thing about that beast is not so much as it, the power that he's going to wield because we know that uh, they are of their father the devil. Mm -hmm. We know that this is the war that's been going on since the garden mm -hmm. and the coming of the Messiah will end that war. The important thing is this, who is this, this one world system uh, that's fought led by the adversary the devil who are they out to make war with? And when you read the Bible, you very well see that who Satan went to make war with is the children that produced the Messiah. Mm -hmm. and, and according to the Bible, uh, those people would be in, in slavery for 400, in captivity rather, for 400 years, and then the Messiah was going to come and redeem them out of captivity. And uh, I'm quite sure, my brother, we're the only black people that's been in captivity just about 400 years in a land that our fathers did not know and of. And been afflicted. Right, and been afflicted those years. See, in Egypt, they can't say, we can't say that that was the Egyptian captivity because uh, we didn't start being afflicted until uh, uh, just as Moses was born. Mm -hmm. You see, then we start to be afflicted. So we're talking about maybe the last when, when Moses left. He left when he left Egypt. He was forty. So when he came back, he was eighty. So we're talking about maybe the last hundred years that our people were in Egypt. We were being afflicted, but mm -hmm. before that, we weren't in affliction. We weren't in affliction. We just we lived in land. You mm -hmm. see. So he was talking about this captivity here because he said, "In the land that your fathers did not know of." And uh, all of our fathers went down in Egypt from time to time. Uh, uh, Abraham went down there, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, that land was known. The land that he was referring to was the daughter of Babylon that hadn't been discovered. Mm -hmm. See, our fathers knew all about the known world. He did. Solomon did trade with the known world. But, but America hadn't been discovered by the Europeans at that time. Uh, <coughs> forgive me. Later on, uh, America was discovered by the Indians. You know, that's something I never understood. How they tell me Christopher Columbus discovered America in 1492, right? Mm -hmm. And when he got here, man, Folk Indians here. Indians was from Maine to Florida, right. from Washington to California. Right. Indians was all over this place, right? They're going to tell me he discovered it. See? That makes but, sense. But see, what it is is this. They laid claim to the land. Right. Once they laid claim to the land and they got in and spied out the Indians and saw what the Indian was all about, then what they did was they came over here and they took this land. But see, Yahweh had already set up, set that up. The, the Indians didn't worship Yahweh. They right. didn't know nothing about it. They had told them, posed a whole lot of gods on them. You know, Diaz was gods to them. Right. But uh, uh, Yahweh had, had, was, was, had this place prepared for his servants to live in. Mm. This is why when our folks came over here, they always sang songs about deliverance of going back to the land right. of Israel. But uh, uh, all of this thing is leading up to one thing, 
our deliverance. Those peace talks they're doing in the Middle East, it ain't going to do no good. This red heifer they're going to sacrifice, it ain't going to do no good because of what Yahweh told his prophets. He said, I'm going to save my people out of captivity. I'm going to put them back in their own land, and they're going to rule the earth for a thousand years in complete peace. And brother, when you get right down to it, mm -hmm. that's the best story I've ever heard. Mm. It's the best thing I've ever heard. I mean, people say, well, you know, we going off in heaven. I mean, one, well, what am I going to do? Right. You know, I mean, all the angels got things to do, you know. Yahweh does things, right? Everything in heaven does things. I'm just going to go there and just sit down hmm. and watch them work, I guess, you know. So that never made any sense to me. But when I, this is why I never went to church, because a whole lot of stuff they talk about didn't make sense. But anyways, as, as I began to study this Bible, I began to, to see that Yahweh kept saying there was a certain people he, wanted, he was going to redeem. Mm -hmm. It was a certain people he was going to save. Mm -hmm. And truly... It's just like when the church says that uh, they're going to be raptured off the earth before the great tribulation period. And there's too much scripture in the Bible to disprove that. Mm. You see, even the book of Revelation itself, where they try to get this from, even the book of Revelation itself even disproves that. Because from what I read in Revelation 14, the first fruits of God and the Lamb with that 144,000, they came out of the tribes of Israel. Right. That's in Revelation 14 chapter. Right. Just before Yahweh got ready to pour his earth. Remember Paul, remember Paul said we're going to be saved from wrath, right? right? right. Just before uh, uh, Yahweh began to pour his uh, uh, wrath upon the earth in Revelation 7 chapter, an angel stood up and said, don't hurt anything till we seal all the, the servants by God in their forehead. And it was sealed 144,000, just mm -hmm. like Paul said, we shall be saved from wrath, mm -hmm. you see. And then that, it, uh, the thing of it is, is this, it's a remnant of us going to be saved. Right. And that remnant, and when you consider that Yahweh is going to kill off nine-tenths of the nations, so when you talk about saving a third of us, which would be a very small remnant, 20, 30 million people, <laughs> right. you can very well see that uh, uh, the earth, will, a man will be able to sit on his own vine and on his own fig tree and, and, and watch the four seasons take care of the earth and his family from generation after generation after generation as long as he walks in harmony with what God had to say. Right. And this is man's problem. Man don't want to do what Yahweh says. That's say. true. That's why we slave. <laughs> you ask the average brother, say, man, do you believe God loves you? He said, yeah, I know he loves me. I said, well, why did he bring your fathers over here slave? Right. And he can't answer that. And the, but I either there say, because we didn't do what he said. I said, well, show me that in the book, and no one can show it right. to you, you right. see. And, and that's simply because people go in the Bible looking for religion, and then you ain't going to find no religion in the Bible. What you're going to find is that the Bible is a history book. It teaches you what happened in the past, what's going on right now today, and what will happen in our future. And this is what we have to be concerned about is what's going down with this one world order because this one world order, you can look at what's happening with our family. 78% of our families are one-parent families. Mm -hmm. Look at our children in the street today. Mm -hmm. You can very well see we as a people, something's got to give. We haven't got long to stay here because we don't have the solid family structures that uh, we used to have. You know, we was talking last week about the uh, drugs in America. Mm-hmm. And you alluded to something about the uh, the physical destruction of America, mm -hmm. but also when you look at uh, uh, how America depends upon the global markets sp mm -hmm. prosperity mm -hmm. to uh, to keep America afloat mm -hmm. financially, if you will. Mm -hmm. And just reading here in the paper, there's there's this. Uh, although America is one of the top producers of oil, mm -hmm. but they also one of the top consumers of oil. Mm -hmm. Thus. Uh, be it once again dependent upon the global markets or uh, nations on the other side of the uh, of the Atlantic mm -hmm. uh, for their uh, to sustain them financially mm -hmm. and sustain them as the top uh, nation in in the earth. Mm -hmm. But that being the case, and with America's destruction destruction being imminent, what are we to do? Well, what we have to do is what we, what our people have done to survive this captivity as long as we have, and those who know the truth. We have to depend on Yahweh, our Elohim, in order to bring us out of this, of, the, of this one here. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to depend on Him a little bit more uh, and get to know Him, so we we'll know what He's doing among our people. That way, surely He'll come in and sup with us 
and us with him, and we have received the, the protection. See, uh, the psalmist said, he has given his angels charge over you to keep you in the way. So this is what, as long as we do be told, the angels of Yahweh will watch over We'll us. be right back. I'm David Geis, and this is the Around the World Report. The community update segment will return next week. Tonight's top story, what's the frequency, Kenneth? The invisible battleground. American military bases have never been popular overseas. Now, many governments overseas have a new reason to resent American military presence in their countries. The reason is radio interference. It appears that the control and guidance systems from American military craft are wreaking havoc with pagers and cell phones as well as emergency telephone service in places like Germany, Japan, South Korea, and the Middle East. It also appears that the devices may interfere with and even incapacitate the weapons themselves. As a result, many multi-billion dollar systems including Patriot missiles and Predator unmanned aerial vehicles are unusable. Germany has now passed a law allowing it to confiscate U.S. equipment using frequencies not approved by the German government and to arrest the user. Saudi Arabia barred the United States from using a $1.4 million satellite communications device because it had not obtained frequency rights. The Pentagon called the problem serious. In a related story, the U.S. announced that it will sell Patriot missiles to Greece to protect them from Turkey. Turkey is a member of NATO. America is a member of NATO. Strange bedfellows are everywhere. The Turkish need to get their pagers and baby monitors ready to repel a possible Greek attack. From the Y Talks, that's W-Y-E, Israel marked the end of the Jubilee celebration with a parade in Jerusalem. The parade was organized jointly by the Jerusalem Municipality and the International Christian Embassy in Jerusalem. Ironically, the land is to go free in a jubilee year. As the jubilee celebration ends, Israel has said she will surrender 13% of her land. Somebody needs to tell the Arabs in Chevron. The Arabs are rioting in Chevron where there has been daily violence for weeks. Violence continues to escalate in the Middle East as they cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. Some say that the Israelis may topple their government if successful. The region in question is now called the West Bank, but it is known in biblical language as Judea and Samaria. Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan acknowledged that the American political system is not the answer for the so-called African American, but alternatives are vague. Like the blind leading the blind, he can articulate the problem, but not a viable solution. The Fed follows a scare with an interest rate reduction. First they scare us, then they apply the booster shot. As has been reported over the last several weeks, an international fear campaign is on to continually remind us of the global economic threat. Now the Fed has pleasantly surprised the stock market by cutting interest rates a second time. This booster shot rallied the bulls and created a boom on Wall Street. But check this out. The value of the dollar on international markets fell sharply. So it is an illusion. One thing is true, we do live in a global marketplace that America does not control. Other wars this week, uh, Turkey and Afghanistan are still posturing at each other. The Taliban is refusing to talk. Both countries are amassing troops along their borders. Ugandan troops repelled from Sudan. Sudanese troops successfully defended their territory against Ugandan rebels. These two countries are also close to war. And finally tonight, last week Catholic Jewish relations were hurt by the canonization of Edith Stein. The Catholic Church called her the first Jewish saint since the first century. No wonder since the Catholics kicked the Jews out in the first century and desabotized their religion. By the third century AD the Catholic Church had cut herself off more or less completely from her Hebrew origins. As if that was not enough, the Catholic Church also suggested this week that Jerusalem should be included in the current Palestinian-Israeli peace negotiations. That's been the Around the World Report for tonight. And now back to our regular program. Hi, 
Hi, welcome back to Signs of the Times. We're taking your calls at 770-559-2999. That's 770-559-2999. We have the elder priest of the New Covenant Congregation of Israel, Yaakov Ben Israel, here on our Ask the Elder segment. And also, just want to let you know, Signs of the Times is now on the radio, 1420 WATB. That's AM every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning from 9 o'clock uh, at 9 o'clock AM. And also, uh, Signs of Time airs in the city of Atlanta on uh, People TV, Channel 12, beginning at 9.30 live as well. So uh, if, you don't miss, if you miss us on the radio, you catch us on any TV program here in the cab or in the city of Atlanta as well. Welcome to your phone calls, 770-559-2999. I think we have a call already. Caller, are you there? Hello? Yes, sir. Go ahead. We're talking with the elder priest of the New Covenant Congregation of Israel. Okay, um, the first question I have, I have two actually. The first one is regarding the, the creation in Genesis. Uh, reading that story you implies that Adam and Eve was the beginning of creation. And the word they use is to create. But if you look at the Hebraic word they're using is barashit, which means to reconstruct or to make. So in an application, create and make are two different things. To create is to bring something up new. If you, you can make a bread because you just put in ingredients and making that bread. But you can't create bread. It's already, it's already been created. And also, isn't that why he tells Adam to replenish, meaning to redo something over? Meaning the earth was destroyed, and then they're replenishing it. And that's why the word, in actuality, is barashit, which means, it comes with the rule of bada, which means to create, to remake something. And the second question is, um, I hear many times that you imply the name of it as being Yahweh. Uh, in Genesis 4.26, it says that, that then meant to be called on the name Yahweh or Lord. So what was he being called before then, before Genesis 4.26? If he says then, it says then they started to call the name Lord. Okay. Thank you for your call, sir. No and problem. can we turn him up in the studio next, on the next call? Well, beginning, uh, uh, dealing with the name Yahweh, uh, Yahweh told Abraham that uh, the people from beyond, uh, uh, from beyond the flood Say, uh, they, didn't, they knew me, well, uh, he told our father, say, your people knew me as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but by my name Yahweh, they did not know me, you know, so uh, this name was revealed basically to the children of Israel uh, uh, at the burning bush. You see, when he said, I am, tell them I am that I am sent me. So Yahweh's name was revealed then. Now, as far as the... Uh, creation is concerned uh, I really don't see where he was headed with with uh, uh, with that creation I really didn't understand uh, his question pertaining to that creation uh, but I do know this when you say he created he made semantics that's all that is created and he made you take some flour you put it together right so what are you doing you're creating a loaf of bread aren't you? are you making a loaf right you are you making a loaf of bread so i really don't well i think what it, it seemed as if he was implying and i'm not sure he can correct me if i'm wrong but um, as if that wasn't the first creation of man as if there was something done this was a second time around so to speak well, that's what, what i have to go by my brother because he said regenerate or you know well, what I have to go by is what I read. And it said Adam and Eve were the first two people created on this earth. So whether there was a creation, I do know this, that uh, the six days was millions of years. I do know that. But see, I understand all that is the process of bringing the various the dinosaurs and so forth upon the earth and then getting rid of them, right? And then putting man, creating man in that, uh, uh, in that environment with animals the size that man can deal with. I can understand that. But uh, uh, I haven't read of anything, anything else to where anything else was created in the image and likeness of, of God but man in the Garden of Eden now. If it's any other creation, then it didn't come out of this book here. We can surmise anything we uh, we want to, but my books in the beginning, the first words in my beginning is in in my book is in the beginning God created the heavens and earth. Mm. You see, and it didn't tell me nothing about no other people anywhere. See, I, I, I'm a type of person like this. I don't like to go back and surmise what happened. What I what I do is this. I deal with what's actually written down. What I can actually prove. And when you say create a maid, you're saying the same thing to me, you see. Uh, uh, so uh, I really can't see. 
from my understanding of it, Yahweh created Adam and Eve in the, in the garden, and they were the first two people created on this earth. Let's go back to the phones. Caller, go ahead, state your name, please. Hello. Go ahead, state your name, uh, please. Yes, uh, Brother Jihad. Yeah, I'm calling, uh, and I'm you know, just concerned. What do you, what do you think these teachings? How do you think these teachings can uh, help the black man living in the uh, inner city in the slums of America? And um, uh, how do you relate them to the, uh, the black man who doesn't really know anything about? What you're saying, uh, I know the people, there are all kinds of forms of Islam, all kinds of forms of, of different religions, but, you know, very few of them really can relate to the black man who, you know, graduated from, uh, didn't graduate from high school, has a fifth grade education with <coughs> 10 German children and trying to better hold a job. So, um, you know, you got a lot of brothers who don't watch Channel 12 and don't know anything about the signs of the times in Israel and everything. So uh, what are you doing to uh, get this message to them and break it down so we can understand it? Because you got to feed a baby uh, milk before you get the steak. And, uh, y'all got some, and this, is, this is good for people who understand how to cipher, but you got a lot of people who really don't understand a lot of what you're saying. Okay. Good. Thank you for your uh, call, sir. No problem. Well, the things that we deal with, my brother, is designed to tweak your interests. It's not designed. We can't teach you anything in a half hour, an hour, you see. Teaching you... 6,000 years of history and who all the various nations are on the earth and what happened to them on the earth, this takes time. And you can't, and you can't just do it just sitting down in an hour. And anybody who thinks they can is a lie and the truth is not in them. <laughs> the thing of it is, is this. In all of the research that we do, we can't go back and s none of these things, none of these religions and so forth and so on show you who you are. You see, we can go back and surmise this and surmise that, but what I find, what, what we do at NCCI is this. We go back into the Bible and set up all the nations on the earth, bring all the nations. The Bible don't teach religion. Uh, people keep mentioning religion. The Bible is a book on history. Man taught religion. That's why we're so confused mm. because we've been listening to man. Mm. But see, our people wrote the Bible, and we know less about it than anybody. And what we don't understand is this. It's the history of the last 6,000 years on earth. And what we do at NCCI is this. We go back, bring up all the nations as they was born on the earth, put them in their land, then put your, our hand on your head, on our people here, and bring us through the whole uh, system right over here in America. And then after, Amer just before America's fall, take us out of America back to our own land. And... Uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of, it's kind of, the, the thing that we're really trying to do is let people know who they are and they, their relationship with their creator. Amen. Once you find out what your relationship as a nation of people is, is with your creator, then that itself, if that doesn't start to make you turn from the, from the, from the ways of strangers and so forth, then you're going to be a stranger. And then that's going to motivate you. Right, nothing's going to motivate you. <laughs> if God come here himself and hit you in the head, it's not going to motivate you because you're right. going to say, well, it was just like when the Messiah showed on the scene. Mm -hmm. Now, folks was expecting the Messiah. Daniel told him the exact year he was going to come. Mm -hmm. But when he came, all of our high-powered uh, uh, teachers and preachers and politicians and so forth, what did they do? They rejected him. And why? Well, not all of them, but the majority of them. Why did they reject it? Because they didn't know what the book says. See, just like Bob Barley said, we got to fill, fulfill the book. We have to fulfill the mm -hmm. book. The whole book is about us. Mm. And like I said, we know less about than anybody. So what we do at NCCI, we teach a man uh, who he is among the nations, why he's in captivity, what's going to happen to him, and his relationship with his God. Now, if he don't want to deal with that, that's his problem. Right. See, this is what NCC is all about. This is what the TV programs, the radio program, is to give you bits and pieces of information that would tweak your interest, if perhaps you've heard if he always call you. It tweak your interest, and then you come by, and any questions or bickering or anything you want to do, let's do it in a setting where I can open my book, you can open my book, your book, and we can sit out, open the history book, and we can sit out all night long. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't call in on a TV show that's got 20 minutes left and expect somebody to explain uh, 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 6,000 years, 6, years of history and what's going to happen to you within that 6,000 years because it's not going to happen. Let's go back to the phones. Carl, go ahead. State your name, please. Good evening. My name is Norman, and it's a question for Elder um, Ben Israel. He had indicated earlier that um, 
the um, Africans, African Americans, were the true, um, I guess, Israelites. My my question for for the elder is, um, does that extend to other Africans throughout the diaspora, including the the rest of the Americas, the Caribbean, those who were left on the west coast of Africa who didn't come across on the boats? Are they also um, a part of this true churn of, of Israel? Okay, of good course. question. Good of question. Course, uh, of course, my brother. Uh, the Caribbean, that's in that middle passage down in there. Now, what happened, when you check history, what happened was um, the Africans had a group of people in their land called Falasha, which is a, uh, uh Ethiopic word for alien residents. These were to serve the Jews that tied the uh, Israelites, if you prefer. These were the ones that Titus had sold to the Egyptians between 70 and 100 AD. Now, this is written in the history books. And the Africans called us Falasha. So when the British, Spanish, Portuguese, and Dutch conspired with the African kings, they conspired to buy back the same people they had previously sold to the Africans. So you ever wonder why we all got it to the west coast of Africa? Hmm. Huh? Because the Africans began to round us up and march us to the west coast of Africa, like the, uh, 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 oh, uh, in, in, in Senegal, mm -hmm. in uh, uh, the, the Ashanti, you see, and the Nubians that was over there. All these are our people, hmm. you see. But what happened was, uh, and all the people down in the Caribbean, they dropped us off as slaves. I mean, these, these, these were separation grounds and so forth and so on. So uh, this is how our people got scattered all down in the Caribbean and so forth, all down in uh, Brazil and so forth. And interestingly, interestingly enough, only 8% of the slaves that was brought over settled, was settled in North America. Mm. The most of the slaves were settled in, in, in the Caribbean and, and in South America and so forth. Uh, but what happened was we began out, we, we already outnumbered them. So we be, uh, if you notice, they don't have that, that Jim Crow stuff that we had uh, down in, uh, in Brazil and so forth. They don't have that Jim Crow stuff that we have here, hmm. simply because it, uh, the two people came to an agreement, okay, you free and uh, 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 you're not a slave and you're in our governmental system and so forth, so they cohabitated. But here in America, we couldn't, see, you got to understand, uh, Yahweh had said some, some thing was going to happen to the house of Judah because the house of Judah was his rulers, mm -hmm. and Levi was his priest. Mm -hmm. So Judah, Levi, and Benjamin uh, is here in America, just like the scripture say, while we're in captivity, we're going to bust clogs, right? cars, right? Well, we down here, we've been in the south, we did farming, didn't we? The south was built, the economic base of the south was built on our back. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we got quite a few people that were left in Africa. It's still quite a few pe uh, of our people there. As a matter of fact, Back in 1981, when the war broke out in Mogadishu, Ethiopia, they started secret air exodus. Secret air exodus. Why so secret? You're taking black people out of Ethiopia, putting them up in Israel, right? Why so secret about mm -hmm. it? It was secret because they figured that we figured that all black folks was African. Mm. See, this is why we still hold on to that stigma, African-American. We're not African-American. We're Hebrew Israelites, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. Even the Africans themselves don't have any too much to do with us, you see, because we are two different seeds. And as you read the narrative of the Bible, you can very well see how we were always in and out of Egypt, in and out of Africa, and uh, especially when Yahweh brought uh, an empire in upon our nation mm -hmm. and chastened us, mm -hmm. what did we do? A lot of our people packed up and went down in Africa right. and hid in Africa until the crisis was over, and then they came back to the land, mm -hmm. you see. So as far as uh, 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 the people that's over in the land today, sure, my brother, there are many of us all in Africa. As a matter of fact, if you read the, the, what the curse said, Yahweh said he was going to scatter us to the four corners of right, the earth. Right. And the only place on the earth that I know that I've never heard of, of one of us coming from is Ireland. But as far as all the other nations are concerned, it, over in Europe, a lot of us didn't know that they had as many black people in uh, 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 Hebrew Israelites in Europe as they did until after the wars began, the First World War and the Second World War, and they went over in Europe and found out more of them over there than there is over here. Mm. Simply because we had ten tribes over there, but they, they don't call them African-Americans. They don't call them African-Europeans. You know what they call them? Europeans. Mm. You see? But over here, what do they call us over here? We call ourselves, they call us blacks, niggers, Negroes, 
the first name we have is Negro, a Spanish word for black, right, right? right? They didn't say we were Africans. They said blacks, right? And, 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 and you know, and I know, I always ask brothers, we claim to be Africans, and we try so hard to please the Africans. We start clubs, uh, 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 culture clubs on uh, college campuses, right? And the Africans won't come. They start their own, and mm. then we can't go. I witnessed that. Right. Now, when they set up, when they have their parties and so forth, and they have many of them, they don't invite us mm. because we're two different people. And I always ask brothers, how many brothers do you know that's married to an African woman? Mm -hmm. And they say, well, uh, they don't marry into us because, you know, you come over here and learn the ways of, of the strangers and so forth. What is going on in South Africa? Mm -hmm. Huh? Whose ways are they learning? Huh? What happened to the brothers that left here and went over there and what was that? When the Africans set up a, a Monrovia, system. Monrovia, Liberia. Right. Set up a, a democracy. The same thing that they had over here. Now they're just as corrupt as this governmental system is here. What happened to all these people? See, what it is is this. We, we look at Africans and say, well, all black people are Africa. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look at it this way. They got some people in Israel that's calling themselves Jews, right? They're not Europeans. Mm -hmm. They're different seed, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They're Shemites, aren't they? Mm -hmm. But they look just like the Europeans do, don't they? Mm -hmm. And everybody call them a different thing, right? But we refuse to believe that we can be of another nation. You know why, brother? Because Master told us. Mm -hmm. See, whatever Master tell us, we're going to believe. Master gave us religion, we go along with it, right? And we know these folks worship Satan. Now, we know that, mm. you see, but we go along with it. The whole the holidays and so forth, they sit up. We go along with these things simply because we like to please master. Mm -hmm. my, I like to please my master, and my master is my creator. Mm -hmm. And when he tell me, say, look, don't you do this here. Don't you cut that tree down and bring it in your house. I'm not going to cut that tree down and bring it in my house, right? Yeah. And I'm not going to go in any church that got that tree in there. Mm. Because he, if, he, if I can't bring it in my house, you know he don't want it in the church, right, don't you? Right, Okay, so that's about that. Bro. Let's go back to the phones. Carla, go ahead. State your name, please. Yes, uh, my name is Ayani. I would like to say um, peace to the panel. Peace, bro. All right. Um, first of all, I want to state that um, I want to put aside all the labels as far as, you know, somebody being an Israelite, somebody being a Muslim, and all those different type of things. But, um I heard the brother talking about um, about the year 2K that's supposed to come about in year 2000, right. and um, all the destruction and I mean everything in dealing with that. And I just have a simple question as far as I mean protecting your home, protecting your family, as far as your wife, your kids, and you know and everything like that. I mean, do you feel as though it's a right for us to um, be able to bear arms and feel? as though you need to protect your home. Because, I mean, far as me being a man, I need to protect my family. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to let nobody come to my home and take away my castle and invade my privacy where as mm -hmm. though I deal with my family. So I just want to know that from the brother, and that's it. Thank you, brother, for your call. All right. Elder. Well, brother, I, 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 I'm going to protect my family too. But those who live by the sword should die by the sword. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. See, what we do is we put, we put, our, we put our trust in natural things that we can see. Mm. But see, you can have a gun in your hand and still get killed, right? Now, uh, and not even know who it was to kill you. I mean, they could be standing right there and you never see him because like Paul said, it's not flesh and blood that we rest with. That's what we see. Mm. It's powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness and exceeding mm. high place. And like you always said, he said, look, you do what I tell you to do and I'm, you're going to have tribulation now because I'm going to try you like metal in a furnace. He said, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save you mm -hmm. if you walk humbly and justly before me and do what I say. I'm going to bring only what he said, a thousand are falling on your right hand mm -hmm. and ten thousand on your left hand, but it won't come near you. Right. Say only with your eyes will you see the reward of the wicked. Mm. So what I do is this. Me and my household, we walk in the laws of God. I mean, none of us, all of us going to sin and come short right. of his glory, right. but we walk in the laws of God. And when something confront us that's of the world, what we do is just we let our God take care of us. You know how we do? We do what he said. Any situation that comes up in your life is, is, is something in here about it. 
So when you know these things, what you do is this: when you see the, when you see Satan, right? It, it's your adversary, the devil, right? Trying to make you you sin against God, trying to make you hurt somebody and go to jail. That's what it is. You hurt somebody and go to jail, then then your wife and your children is open meat. Right. They open prey, you see. You have to be wise as serpents and, and humble as dove. Like the scripture said, agree with your adversary while you're in the way of it, mm -hmm. see. Agree with him and let your God take care of the business. Mm -hmm. Look at the brother. Uh, we, we got a whole history to show us what, what happened. Now, Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, the Lord talked to him. See, sent angels to visit him, right? Mm -hmm. The brother had family and so forth and so on. But when the Babylonians came, they had Jeremiah in the safest place in the city, in the dungeon, in the prison. <laughs> See? Mm -hmm. And when the king came, what did he do? What did he do? He said, Jeremiah, if you want to go to if right. you want to go to Iraq, sure did. you go to Iraq. If you want to go to Egypt, you go to Egypt. If you want to stay here, you stay here. Mm -hmm. You see, because I know who you are. What was it that told him who, who he was? It was the angel of the Lord that put it in his mind. Said, so that's one of my prophets. Right. And the same thing with us. We don't have to worry about uh I, I haven't owned a gun, man, since it's been 20 years since I, it's been 20 years since I touched the gun. Right. And uh, I got family. Mm -hmm. I have a wife. But I do believe that Yahweh is going to give me the protection that it's going to take to cover them. Then, and if he doesn't, Yahweh give it and Yahweh takes away. Mm. You see, so that, that's the way I have to deal with that. I go back in the Bible and I read, like, uh, look at all the sons David had. Man, look, look how his sons got killed off, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But David maintained his integrity before his God, didn't right. he? And what's going to happen to him? Yahweh promised him, say, you're going to be the prince in that kingdom. Say, I'm going to raise you up, and you're going to be the prince of the whole earth. Mm. You see, that didn't say his sons was going to be there. Right. But see, what we have to understand is this. Like I said before, Yahweh giveth when he want to. We say, I'm going to get me a baby. You ain't going to get nothing. Mm. You, are, you are not going to get anything. It's your, only Yahweh can make that seed be planted, right. make that seed germinate, right, and come into a child. The children are on loan to us from, from our Creator. And this is what we don't understand. This is why we let them go crazy. But uh, they're on loan for us. And just <laughs> like he loaned us to us, he can take them back right. anytime he want to. And I'm not going to get out there. Sure, I love my kids. Right. And I love my family. Right. But I'm not going to get out there and just go stark raving mad because he takes somebody out of my household. I'm not going to do that. You know why? I realize he has the power. Mm -hmm. And I try to look at that and see what it is. I don't ask why you did this. I know why he did it because that's what he wanted to do. And that's what my God does on this earth. It's what he wants to do to try you like metal in the furnace. We talking about living forever and ever, even forever and ever, right? Mm -hmm. We aren't going to just walk into that. I mean, we're going to have to pay some very dear prices for these, these these things, you know, what you think sacrificing is all about. Let's go back to the phones. Call the ahead. State your name, please. My name is Dexter Hall. How y'all doing? Uh, I'm sorry. Can we bring him up just a little bit? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. So my name is Dexter Hall. How y'all doing? Doing well, just fine, fine sir. Doing, I'm doing pretty. All right. Look here, man. I want to, can you tell us? Like how we can get some results now, you know, like how I'm going to get out the ghetto, how to get me some money, and then give us some personal examples of how the Lord blessed you and tell us what you did every day to receive that blessing. Okay, appreciate it, brother. Thank you, sir. Yeah, brother, I can tell you what, exactly what you can do to get out the ghetto. Get you a high-powered paying job, and you get out the ghetto. That's the only way you're going to get out. Uh, you ain't going to walk down the street unless you're going to sell a ton of drugs. I walk down the street and rob somebody, the only way you're going to get out, out, out of the ghetto is the same way other people get out of the ghetto. They earn it. And then when we move, what we do is end up making a ghetto wherever we go. <laughs> you see? So, uh, 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 like they always say, you can take black folks out of, uh, 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 out of the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto out of black folks because Yahweh told us, say, look, your dwelling places are going to be desolation. Mm. And we have been living in desolations ever since we've been in this country. Sure, it's that 10% that get jobs, we move out in Lithonia and all up in, you know, all around Sandy place, Springs man. and everything, move in nice houses and so forth and so on. But once they move up there, what they do is this, they forget their roots. Mm -hmm. They don't want to bring anything back to the neighborhood. 90% mm -hmm. of the people that move out of the ghetto, they through with it. Right. Well, then Yahweh give you so that you can help somebody else, right? And the average one of us, if we had some money and we got up out of the ghetto and a brother come up to you and say, man, look here, I got five kids and I need me a house. Guess what? I bet you we won't give him the money it takes to get a house with. Right. So what I do, my brother, is this. 
I walk humbly and justly before my God, and I pray for certain things. What he gives me, I accept. When I don't receive something, his answer was no. I mean, just like it is when, I, when my children come to me. Sometimes I say yes, and sometimes I say no. And most of the things that we ask for, you know what they're for? To consume on Consumption, our own right. lust. Right. That's all they're about, consuming them on, on ourselves. And I, I'm 60 years old. I've consumed enough on myself when I was a young man in the street. The thing of it is, you have to, what we have to learn how to do is this. Take whatever it is that we're given and learn how to give a percentage of that back to the community. We do that, you have to make it. I just want you to stay tuned for the uh, Signs of Times commentary and uh, see you next week.